This video is a guide to the early game of LECMOD. It is a complement to a written guide. And what I'm going to show in this video is how to apply the priorities outlined in that guide um, to an actual game of, of LECMOD. This is a single player game. I'm playing with AI, but the same principles can be applied to an actual multiplayer game in the no quitters environment. I'm playing on the most recent Hellblazers map and the most recent version of LECMOD, version 17. I'm playing as the Ottomans. They're just a generic sieve. They have no early bonuses. I'm trying to show that this is a strategy uh, that can be done for almost any game, almost any sieve. This is a general framework that can be applied that you can practice repeatedly and improve your game. In the guide, I outlined three priorities that should shape your first 30 to 40 turns. They are scouting to find city spots, uh, getting workers, securing faith, preparing to settle your cities, and lastly, settling your cities, growing them, uh, and developing towards the mid-game. So, I mentioned in the guide that Civ is a snowball game. What this means is that small advantages become big advantages over time. When I see new players, I often see them make mistakes on the very first turn. With the Hellblazers map pack, your capital is very strong. All your strategic resources are in the first two rings. You've got luxury resources in the first three rings. There is very little reason to move. For new players, I would say 90% of the time, you want to settle in place. Do not risk moving somewhere else for a very dubious benefit. I could move to this copper or this copper, but I'm not sure exactly what's here. And the benefit of this maybe very small uh, improvement is offset by the fact that I'm waiting a turn to start my entire game. I'm losing a turn of production, I'm losing a turn of science, and the snowball benefits of that are huge. So I'm going to settle in place, put my city on production focus, lock a growth tile, and queue up two scouts. In this video, I'm going to follow the three priorities I lay out and do nothing else. Anything else in, in the early game is a distraction. You don't want to do it. You want to focus on scouting for city spots, preparing to settle, and s settling and growing your cities. So I'm going to start scouting in a circle around my capital, trying to find city spots. I tech mining first. I want that extra hammer from the mine. There's nothing else I want to build early. I'm going to not take this rune, I want to keep my warrior in open terrain, try and get the most out of its sight. There's two Lexes here. There's probably a city spot right here. Maybe two. City state right here. And there's ocean out here, so I can be pretty confident there's not going to be any city spots back here. Unfortunate rough terrain, but nowhere to go. Tundra up here, and coast up here, so there's probably not any city spots in here either. Now that I've finished my first two scouts, I have a decision to make. I can either uh, build a monument, hoping to go to liberty, or I can just build a worker and go tradition. I outline in the post the reasons why you want to go tradition or liberty, 
but not honor or piety, I very strongly recommend this for new players. Either stick to liberty or stick to tradition and finish the tree first before taking any other policies. If you want to go liberty, you have to build a monument now or else your culture will be too slow. But considering I see just one, maybe two, maybe three city spots, probably nothing back here, I'm going to go tradition. I don't have this enough space for liberty. Build a worker. Take pottery. I need to start preparing to settle cities. So what I need is a worker. I need a shrine. If I can't find a natural wonder. And I need to start preparing to think about where I'm going to put my cities. I've got a city right here. Maybe a city right here. Another unique flux. Or city-state. And a player. Isn't that a ruin? I'm gonna wait on this ruin for one turn. Oh, there's another one. I, I just in case it's a pop. This state. I need to think about what city state I want to steal from my worker. Papuan, perfect. You can see as I grow, I'm unlocking the growth tiles. And four pop is good enough. I've got four hills I can work, that's perfect. Don't need any more. Building a granary would be a waste of time. I outline why in my post, but the gist of it is. Um, the benefits take too long, like it would be four turns to build, another four or five turns to grow, that's delaying your settlers eight turns, that's essentially delaying all your extra cities, all of your three or four extra cities for the sake of your one pop in your capital, that's not worth it. So I'm gonna buy this tile save my gold so it grows to this one. Oh, I need a shrine first. And I need calendar for the citrus. Okay. Nice wonder. I might be able to steal from Chaco Canyon. I might steal from Wellington. Masonry is not particularly useful, but oh well. Another box here. So I have one, two, three, four, five unique luxes. Probably f four cities then. Maybe five if I find one more. I don't know if I'll be able to sell this spot. I'd like to, though, for the wonder. There's a city state up here that might be blocked. There's barbs near here I might not be able to steal. That isn't blocked, and I can steal that worker there. So, time for settlers. Turn 13. This is a good time if you're a tradition to start building settlers. You want to get this, might seem early to some players, but this is really strong to get your cities going this fast. Hopefully that doesn't make this player too angry. So I'm going to need Lux Trades. Sometimes hard to get Lux Trades from the AI on single player. 
because they're slow to improve their luxes and they get mad at you very easily. I'm going to try and clear this camp over here. And I'm going to go onto that citrus. Chop it out. To find my horses next. The first thing you want to do with your workers is always um, improve luxes or clear hills if you uh, to, to produce settlers. If possible, you want to be working four hills while building settlers. I'm going to work fourth hill next turn. Buy this citrus, or I could chop, improve, come back. I think that's what I'll do. And my first city is going down here. I don't think I have to race to any spot to beat the AI because of these wall of city states. So there's two luxes here. It'd be really nice to get these improved fast. Actually, what I will do is move this one. Work that silk. Get it, get it out fast. There's settler. Need to work that hill. That was a mistake not working that hill. You clearing the camp? It'd be nice that I only have one camp here. I need bronze working for this cocoa. There's a bunch of horses over here, and I might be able to snag this gold if the... It's already expanded twice, I might actually be able to get this gold. I'm going to build a worker here first. This city has a ton of chops. I may build two workers, actually. This city's got one, two, three, four, five, six chops at least. It'll be really good to get this city going quick. I could build a granary first, but building a worker and then chopping of the granary would be just as fast, and it's good to have plenty of workers early. This is something newer players make a huge mistake about, not building enough workers. And I want to get my scout up around here, maybe steal another worker. Chop that out. I'll work on this banana for a bit and then go and prove it. Lux deals. Might have to find another AI. Mad at me. Or another ruin in there. Very nice. Bringing this warrior back. My next city. I think I want to settle right there. There's more growth than I thought there was. That's pretty nice. Trapping. I go there in two turns. Notice how I'm improving my luxes immediately as my cities go out. I could move on to the hill here. But I've got enough gold to buy it from here. This is a slightly better spot. It's farther away from the coast. It's on horses, which I like. I'll go unhappy here for two turns. That's unfortunate, but 
can't really be helped. I'm getting no luck steals, haven't made any out. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll buy out the gold. Worker first. There's no point in building a granary if I can't grow. Ninety-five gold, pretty nice. And there's another player. So this city's not a forward settle, that's okay. Still working on that. Get the happiness, so I'm free to grow. That's good. I want to snag this next worker that comes out of Monaco. Pantheon. Religious idols looks good. That's gold, and, or that's faith and uh, culture off copper and gold. I've got a bunch of copper. I've got a gold. Looks good to me. It's generally, if you're not sure what pantheon to pick, the one that suits your lux is usually a good idea. It's a mix of faith and gold. Usually works pretty well. I want this worker to go to the cocoa. This worker to go to the gold. Okay, I'm gonna need to escort that settler. I'll bring this worker up to improve that Lux as well. And build my last settler. Notice how I've done nothing but build settlers for these last couple turns. I am completely focused on getting cities out and growing. I am not distracted by anything else. Not building any wonders. Not uh, building any extra military. Not building anything that distracts me from my goal. This is annoying, Barbs. Still no Lux deals. That's okay. I'm doing pretty well. Set all these other cities. You want to be growing them if you can, having them on production focus. Chop. Improve luxes, please. This one's going for the cocoa. Selling for the extra trade route. Not scouting very well over there. Granary first here, this city needs growth. Needs it badly. Coffee's that last unique lux I need to improve. Oh, I just lost out on a trade there. Wasn't quick enough. I actually have a spices here as well, so I'll bring that work home. And this last one is going right here. And there's extra resources up there, that's very nice. This is a pretty good city after all. To build a granary here, nice two turn granary. Trying to find other players over there.
Do you still hit me? تحياتي. No. Good. This worker can improve the coffee afterwards. Gold. I would like to steal more workers from Monaco as soon as they stop getting abused from by barbs. I've got a lot of gold. Uh, I kind of feel like buying a worker here. It sounds good to me. I'll build another worker and then I'll build a caravan. Let's so build a granary after. Chop that deer. And I'll go unhappy just briefly. Because I don't have that Lux trait. That's a shame. I'm a bit more careful there. So I stagnate my cities. This wonder. And that was. And that. No, oh, that. Mm, that was a mistake. Now I can't buy the cocoa. Or the coffee. Greenery. By the Good. <clears throat> Notice how the first priorities with my workers are to improve luxes, then to chop forest, and then after that I start improving tiles. These ruins are not meeting any sieves, unfortunately. There's no worker. Happy in two turns. It's unfortunate. It's slow. But don't have a choice. Missing out on that Lux trade was really bad. There, there, try and over there. I want to clear that one. There's another sieve, Lithuania. No lux to trade. Getting quite unlucky. It'll all be good next turn. Now I can grow.
I could build another scout here. It's good to go meet players, especially when you're lacking on happiness. Can also help clear this camp. This caravan will go to the cap, this caravan will go to Kanya, because it was the last one settled, has some catching up to do. Maybe another worker, it's good to have at least two workers per city. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need probably at least build one more. Or I could steal more. Maybe I'll just. No, I'll work this good. I've got plenty of unimpro unimproved tiles here still. So help me clear the camp. I like to build water mills before uh, libraries, just because the extra food and extra hammer, it adds up a lot over time. Uh, in the long term, it gives you more more science than building the libraries early. There's a Vox trade, finally. Alaikum. Now I've got lots of happiness. So it's already getting towards turn 45 here. This is essentially the end of the early game. I'm working on building infrastructure. I'm going to start building libraries soon. You can see what the science benefit is of not building early wonders, of getting those cities out early because my cities are already pretty well developed. They're generating plenty of science. I'm in a strong position here. Chaco's losing its workers, so maybe I can return them. At this pace, I'm gonna get to civil service uh, before turn 60 probably, turn 58, 59. Once you play a lot of these games, you get a good feel for where your sim is at. And I wouldn't... If you're a new player watching this guide, don't expect to have a result like this immediately. This is the result of playing a lot, essentially, and having a lot of practice. And this is something that improves with practice. Uh, things like managing tiles, things like... Um, not uh, dying to barbs. These are things that uh, improve over time. And if, again, because it's a snowball game, the small improvements make a big difference. Uh, the very best players are just a tiny, tiny bit more efficient than the very good players. But that difference makes a big, big deal. Uh, makes a huge separation by the end of the game.
Now I'm starting to build libraries. Starting to feed my cap. So it's turn 46, for example. That's a pretty common common timing for uh, hang gardens to go. But instead of hang gardens, look how much food I have in my cap, in my expands. This is so much stronger than if I had just rushed a wonder. Because I have all these extra improved tiles, I have all this happiness. The cumulative benefits are massive here. Uh, my science is going to be very strong in this game. You know, this would be a game where I'd get to universities. Uh, I'd go workshops first, and then probably universities by turn 73 or 74. Very strong. Bug you. I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't want this uh, to go on too long. Just because it's supposed to be a comp. I'll link the main guide in video description if you have any comments or questions or things you'd like clarified uh, you can just leave a comment uh, thanks for watching um, maybe I'll upload uh, I'll take recordings of me playing some multiplayer games maybe I'll upload them just to show you more of what that looks like in an actual multiplayer game versus just messing around in single player but these the whole purpose of the guide is that these are principles that can be applied in every game that it's um, sort of a specialist strategy. It's not something you need a lot of experience to do. And these are things you can repeat and practice every game. Thanks for watching.